weird today. Yay, we'll see if I have more luck with this one. All right, guys, sorry for that. Um, that's really annoying. I went through, so this, this is an update for my three days at the fair people. Um, we are up in the ante on your strength this week, and I'm gonna, so I'm gonna demonstrate your new, um, your new strength circuit very quickly, talk through what I care about in each move and why, and number three, remind you what it is we're doing here and what we've been working towards. So Morgan, if you're watching this as well, Morgan is my, uh, my ultra runner, one of my ultra runners. She is not doing three days at the fair, but her, um, her uh, entire system is gonna sync up very nicely with the people doing uh, the Vermont 100K. So, yay, you're, I'm sorry, Morgan, I have not yet gotten you that big, long email regarding strength, and I promise you, it is coming. But for now, the, you wanna, this is what I'm going to be working you up to um, with all of those uh, moves that you've been seeing um, that over and over and over and over and over again. So to recap, what I've been trying to do to keep things nice and simple for everyone doing any of my ultra programs is sort of a plug and play. And that plug and play, it's like, we're going to do this piece, we're replacing this piece now. This piece here we're replacing it with this week with a brand new circuit okay so crunch squish remember we had that for a couple weeks and then the objective was to try to do it either without the ball or with something smaller than the ball behind you we are up in the ante again from there and we're getting off of just your core so the reason I care about this and um, is it's less about it's not for the purposes that you think it serves, okay? I've had you guys doing hella plyo, like lots and lots and lots of plyo. And yeah, it just so happens that these drills are part of the basics of speed, but I don't really care right now about getting you faster. I care about getting you adapted to the surface you're gonna be running on, right? So we have gone from doing pretty hard stuff, pretty long stuff, to insane amounts of stuff in the past two weeks. You're gonna be tired. You're gonna feel like you're hurting. I hope you do check out my Nuzzle newsletter. Part of the reason I send it and what I'm always thinking of in the back of my head is what do my runners need to see this week? There was one last, one last week about um, an, an elite ultra marathoner that had a big conversation with the coach and said, I wanna start doing the mileage all my, now that I see that I could be good, I wanna start doing all the mileage that my friends are doing. And her coach is like, okay. She thought he was gonna say no. He's like, okay, but it's gonna be a shock to your system and you're gonna be feeling the, the side effects of that shock to your system for the next three to four months. He like months. That's how long this incredibly fit woman that was fit enough to be competitive that really wanted to start going for a podium finish, she was up in the ante all over the place and it was going to take her body three or four months to adjust to the train load. Okay, so that, that's kind of under underlying point number one. I'm just gonna like say it here since no one ever lets me be subtle. It's no wonder you don't feel good right now. You're doing crazy shit and you're doing a lot of it. It was a shock to your system and that shock is ongoing. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It doesn't mean you're weak. You are right where you need to be no matter what you're feeling right now, unless you're still feeling overtrained, in which case we need to talk. But there's a difference between like, I really don't want to do this run. And if I put on my shoes, I am going to cry because it's not worth it. Also, when it comes to the recovery stride sandwich, here's the purpose that it serves. You should feel better at the end of that run than at the beginning. And there are two lessons I want you to learn with this run and the reason I make you do it all of the time. It doesn't go away, by the way. What my elites are doing those regularly right now. You should feel better at the end than you do at the beginning. And it's not just because you're going super slowly. It's also because in the middle of that super slow motion, you're doing faster stuff that fires up your fast twitch muscles. It's the neuromuscular stimulation that leads to speed. It also makes you feel fresher. It makes you feel better. The reason I'm making you do them at the top of every hour in your longer mashup runs is to so that you know this is a trick you have in your dispose in your in your tool bag, one that you have practiced over and over and over and over again. That if you're in any sort of a distance running event and you start to flag and you feel a little tired and you don't feel good, you can sort of trick your system into feeling better by doing a couple strides. It wakes up a whole different muscle chain that you don't need to use all the time and that burns out pretty quickly. 
and just a few strides can be enough to make you feel fresh again and keep so you can keep going. So that's one of the reasons why you have them in a longer hard run. It's one of the reasons why you have them in and at the end of every run you do. It's a hope that you'll walk off the track, away from your run, away from that one mile loop, feeling a little bit better than you did before you started. Okay, so that's number one. So all that ultra plyo, it's for the adaptations, it's for your joints, it's for everything going on in your body right now um, that I'm not talking about because as soon as I start talking about it, you guys start trying to game the system and I love you, you're super duper smart and I love smart people, but when you try to think around me, um, that's when bad things happen, but it, that always happens. So here's what we're kind of getting to, the, point of, the broader point I want to get to before I start demonstrating stuff. Sorry for the awkward angle. Do you guys remember a move called hollow rock hold? I sure do. I remember the first time I assigned it at the track, the response I got from everybody. I remember the first time I said, we need to incorporate this into a program. Uh, people I was working with were like, this is too hard. We can't do this. And I'm like, no, it's important. It's good information and it's a great exercise. Hollow rock hold, if you remember, lie down on the ground, arms above your head, feet outstretched. Press the small of your back into the ground, keeping, locking your knees to keep them straight, lifting them only as high off the ground as they need to go to keep the small of your, your back pressed into the ground, and then lifting your shoulders. That's all that move is, but I got more complaints about it. I'm not strong enough to do this. I'm not fit enough to do this. You don't know me. You don't know my, like, this is too hard. This is too hard. This is too hard. You're not paying attention. I actually was paying attention. That was giving me data about who I was working with, right? The reason people hated it and the reason I love it is because it tells me what, when you say this hurts coach, I know what I need to work on. So when you say my lower back hurts, I know that we don't have any musculature up here or even better that we don't have obliques that are helping your lats talk to your core. I also know that you don't lift your armpits, that you don't have musculature in here so that your when it's like my arms feel too heavy your back is literally doing all the lifting finally when you say hey my legs are too heavy i weigh too much i cannot do this exercise what you're telling me is your hip flexors need a little work either they're a little weak or this up in here is turned off and that's your psoas so here's again to show you what i mean down arms up this should be by the way Really easy for you guys now. You could just hang out here. Because you know, my arms feel heavy. I press my armpits down towards my waist and that turns on my lats. And now they're doing the work. My legs feel heavy. I press my back into the ground a little bit harder. And I exhale. And just that alone recruits these muscles to do a little more work. My neck hurts, great. I support my neck, I focus on that exhale, and I focus on pressing my legs to the ground. Woo! All of this would have been hard when we first got started. The reason it's easier now is because your body is working in concert. We've spent a lot of time, piece by piece, strengthening all the muscles in the chain and adding in enough neuromuscular connectivity to make sure that those chains are speaking to each other, which is why two years ago, Hollow rock hold was the worst thing ever, and all it did was make your back hurt. But now, you're like, oh, this isn't bad at all. I could hold this for a minute. And I'm sure you can. And you can probably do it without feeling any pain in your lower back. Because it was never about your lower back being bad. It was never about your legs being heavy. It was never about you being too fat or too this or too that. It was about we just hadn't taken the time to develop those areas and now you have and all of the time we spent developing those areas will benefit you in a great big way on race day so to recap continue with the ultra plyo i know you hate it but it is so good for you think of it like your vegetables if you can do it one day a week i'm happy i would prefer doing it as assigned but if you start to feel burned out that's a really good one easy thing to cut continue with the arm weighted exercises I showed you guys last week. Adding those in wherever you can. Three days a week is enough. We need these muscles on top, not just these underneath, but these on top. That is gonna get to you with the arm motion, especially if you're wearing a pack and it cuts your circulation off a little bit and you get tired and this starts to curl forward. You're gonna need strength to keep this back 
and keep moving. And I'm telling you, if you're not already feeling this after your two ridiculously, ridiculously, insanely long weekend runs, you're gonna start to feel it really, really soon. You're probably hurting in places you've never hurt before, and that's okay. Again, it doesn't mean you're weak. It means we're doing something new and we're becoming aware. Being aware of this doesn't mean after all this time, I'm still weak. It's like after all this time, now we need to put all the final little bits together before we get to the race. Yay, you, we got time. And that, and we're gonna spend a little time working on this part of your shoulder. And by the way, that routine is amazing. If you have to go to the beach, if you have to wear a halter top anytime soon, if you have to wear, I don't know, a dress to a function on a Friday, and people are like, oh, your shoulders are really nice. I'm like, it comes from doing extra sets of those. Not heavier weights, not more of it, just remembering every time I walk past my weights to be like, oh, I can do a quick, do I, do I have two minutes? I'm gonna do one, two, three, for 10 of this, 10 of this, 10 of this, you know the routine by now. It makes your shoulders look awesome. And it also makes them work in concert with your lats so that everything's connected and you're working efficiently and you're not just working hard, okay? So, tell you that, tell you this. You've got more going on than you think you do. I know this is hard. I know it sucks. I know your brain is in, a, is, in, is in a bad place and there are little weasels in that bad place talking to you, telling you that you never should have started and this isn't worth it and it's really, really terrible and it's a gorgeous day and why are you spending that day running? Okay, wait, never mind. Maybe we do need to be outside running, but do we have to be doing this? No, you don't, but you chose to. How badass are you? And you've chosen this consistently for weeks and you will not fall on the last hurdle because you felt a little too tired to do one extra set of exercises that were designed to keep you moving on race day. You with me? Get motivated. We're about to do some really good stuff, stuff that you need. Okay. Now with that, no further ado, and you can see why we've been doing what it is I've been asking you to do. We are going to, oops, change the camera angle a little bit, and revisit strength. This is your new strength series. I do not yet have a pithy name for it, but here's the what and the why. What I'm about to ask you to do. Heel circles. When I say heel circles, I want you to take a really stiff loop. One that, if this was a bow and arrow, you can only draw it back maybe an inch or two. More than that, because you know how to recruit your lats now. Yay, you, and you're so strong. But realistically, we don't need this going out very far. We want the tightest, hardest, heaviest loop you've got. <sighs> Draw your shoulders back. Lock your cage. <sighs> load the front. Step out a little bit. Not too far. Don't go crazy. We really want your, your feet about hip distance apart. Press your elbows into your waist. You'll see why in a minute. It helps keep your shoulders back. Rise. Press outwards. Making a circle, an outward circle with your heels. If you feel this in your lower back, do not lock your knees. Keep a little bend in there, but you're going to feel it in your ankles and your calves. Side. If you're struggling on this press right there and you find your feet rolling out, come in a little bit. And the reason we do this with a locked cage is to keep your transverse abdominis engaged, to keep your feet speaking to your hip flexors as well as your psoas muscle. And if all, if this, your cage is locked and this is happening, then when we move your legs, that connection between your foot all the way up into your abdomen is occurring. And that connection is more important than anything else you're going to get out of this exercise. So I beg you, we're at the hard step now. you got to do what I say to do exactly the way I say to do it. This matters. Here we go. For one minute, pushing those heels out, rotating outward, making circles for one minute. Okay, I, I am indifferent to if you keep going outward the whole time or if you do 30 seconds this way and then do 30 seconds the other way. This way is way harder. It's way harder to balance. It's way harder to enjoy. It's way worse. I'm asking you to press outwards because that's going to use this chain. 
You should feel it in your IT bands. You should feel it in your glutes here as they stabilize. You should really feel it in your calves all the way down your Achilles tendon. Okay, be sure that you spend extra time foam rolling that carefully once we've initiated this exercise. Right, we're not, it's not gonna hurt you. This exercise won't break you. Not doing this exercise will. Julie, if you start to feel plantar fasciitis coming back because of this, and I do prefer that all of you guys do this barefoot for this reason. If you start to feel it in your, in your plantar fascia, tell your PT right away. Tell me right away, we'll make the necessary adjustments, but this will be a very good clue of the final things we need to fix before race day, so speak up if something goes wrong, okay? That is the first one. The second move, we're throwing in. You can see this on Instagram. I have chosen diaper wipes. Big old box of diaper wipes. <sighs> Baby wipes to press on to. First is the setup. Put that loop around your knees, please. Just above it, right there. We want the small of your back off the floor, your shoulders pressed in. Here's where your feet go. Put your heels on the box towards the edge, and we want your knee directly over your hip. So you see where I am right now? I need to scoot back a little bit. That, that's better. That's where you need to be. Your toes should not be able to touch the surface. You couldn't flatten your foot right now if you had to. So we're gonna start with that. That's the lineup, that's the setup. Then we put, we let our heels dangle off the box and put our toes on. One, be very conscious of your collarbones here. I say open your collarbones because what happens is when people start working hard and this starts working, just like it when they're fatiguing in a race, they curl forward. Their shoulders come off the ground, all this curls forward. That's a different move. That's literally not what we're doing. We want all of the work that's gonna be, these are the, uh, your, your lats, your core, it's all a supporting actor in the main event, which is this. We're gonna roll up, make sure those coll that collarbone is open. Nothing in here is working. Arms akimbo tends to help with that. Turn that fire, that booty on as hard as you can on both sides. Kick that leg out, start with the right side, pulse up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. When you do, don't let this start to turn sideways. I know it gets heavy. We want to keep your hips aligned as much as possible, but the one on the left is doing all of the work. And the further your heel hangs off, the more work your hamstring will be doing. We are just wanting to say hello to the hamstrings. You're gonna feel them here, but not so badly that you're getting hurt. We're just here to get stronger, okay? If you feel it too much in your hamstring, move, go from here, move your foot inward a little bit, still let your heel dangle. You've got this entire arch space to work with. Remember, the more that's hanging off, the more, that's more work for your hamstrings. And we can dial, but we want the hamstrings to be working. But if you find yourself curling forward, working too hard, struggling to hold that position, then we probably need to move the foot, only the heel hanging off. That's way easier. Got it? Try to keep the knees aligned, hips aligned. Don't go crazy, we're not hyperextending, higher is not better. We just want a pulse. Here's what it looks like on the other side. Doing one minute of this, 30 seconds on each side to start. If you press this high or that hard, it's gonna hurt your lower back. That is not what we're here for. Okay, so that is a one-legged lift. Next come crunch pulses, okay? With that, you're gonna think a lot about your booty bone, those sit bones. When you're on top of them, you roll back, there's sort of like a flat to your back. Think about where that space is as you go down. Grab two weights, don't go crazy. I'm using three pounds here. Three pounds is plenty. Press the small of your back hard into the ground and let your feet lift. With big exhale, straighten your arms, keeping your shoulders back. You're not pulling them forward, right? We're not trying to hyperextend. 
All we're doing, keeping the shoulders on the ground, lift those weights till they're in line with your knees. Then on the next big exhale, we're gonna come up, find the spot you can balance, and pulse. And that is what's happening. It's very subtle. You are lifting very little. Your focus is on straightening those legs. You're focusing on straightening those legs while pressing your elbows down to your waist so that your lats are supporting you. This is no different than hollow rock hold. It's just hella harder. You're using everything in the same chain. Congratulations on being strong enough to do this. It's a hard, hard move, okay? It's not about faster. If you're going too fast here, you're cheating. No cheating, we're not using momentum to our advantage. We are trying to work every muscle in your body in a very unnatural, uncomfortable position here because you are gonna be focused on pressing down, focused on straight arms, lift, straighten. Okay? If you cannot feel your armpits pressing towards your waist, get a lighter weight or try it with no weight. That is very important. This connection here, when you press your elbow, when you press your armpit towards your waist, there's a muscle here that's turning on. It's firing up and that muscle, you can see it, it goes into your obliques and connects your obliques in your lats. So that's what that downward press kind of feels like and that's the connection you should feel because that connection there is what helps your body levitate without putting pressure on your lower back, okay? Strength, that's all strength you're going to need once we put that pack on and make you run on race day. The final move, I call these twisted, <laughs> twisted bird dogs. You're about to see why. Now, if you remember, the setup for a bird dog, you want your knees directly under your hips. You want your hands directly under your shoulders. And you do not want your hands very far apart at all. Okay? So... And with this in mind, pressing, and once again, your elbows down towards your waist, which is gonna engage your waist. <sighs> Big exhale, lift your left leg, straight, not up, we're not hyperextending your back. See what happened there with my back? We don't want that. We just want it straight out. And this is a bird dog where your right arm goes up, okay? Instead, what we're gonna do is in your right hand, take a weight, no more than five pounds, I'm using five, Step one, exhale, row, twist, straighten, fold, return, down. Faster is not better, controlled and with intention and purpose is better. Once again, row, twist, and you should feel it all in here in that move, straighten, and when you straighten, don't let that leg fall. That's the tendency, right? Don't let that hip, don't let your booty move too much. Down. So, to recap. Now this time we're gonna we're gonna try it again. We're gonna focus on that left leg and the left glute. <sighs> Exhale. Row. <sighs> Twist. Pro here, I'm focusing on two things. Number one, keeping that left foot lifted. And two, pressing the top of my right foot into the ground. Extend, back, fold, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. We're gonna do a minute on each side.
Here, every single time, no matter what, touch that weight to the ground, reset your hips. If you find this, it's dropped, lift it back up. Row, twist. Twist by pressing the top of your left foot into the ground. Do not let that right foot drop. Row, extend, retract, return. More is not better if you cheat and use gravity. This brings everything together in here. It's a balancing act, it's a struggle, it's hard. Look how hard I'm breathing right now. And I didn't even do a full minute of it. Do one minute of those on each side. And that is your five minute strength series. Do it the same as you were doing crunch squish. I will take either two sets with two minutes of rest in between. This is a full body workout. It's gonna be cardio, so you need the full two minutes of rest in between sets. Two five minute sets with a two minute break that's 12 minutes. You can do those 12 minutes on your hard and your egregiously long run days. The way I write the plan, that is, I think Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or Sunday. Not Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, it's Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. Okay, or I will take one set whenever you remember to do them, okay? But this is it. This is where at the point we're pulling it all together and getting ready for the final push. Yay, you! It's almost April. April. You have survived. Congratulations. That's a big deal. It's good stuff. You are not weak. You're the opposite of weak. You're the biggest badasses I've ever met. We just got to keep pushing forward a little bit longer. You can do this. You will do this. You're going to love it. You're going to love every second of being there and this miserable, miserable experience because you will be strong enough not just to start but to finish with grace. And you're going to finish strong. You're going to wish you had more time. You're going to be like, next year we're coming back and sign up for longer because I could have kept going. You were coached, you were loved, you were winning at life. I am proud of you. I know it has been a rough week. I know it sucks. I know you did long runs yesterday and you probably didn't get responses from me because I was hung over as fuck and I'm sorry about that. But I will say that does not in any way detract from what you did. It's more about what I did on Friday night. So, which really wasn't a whole lot. I'm just really out of practice and I didn't eat enough. And I went in to that gala dehydrate. F that. It's my, it's, my, it's my mistake. I should be old enough, but fuck that. So there you go. Your coach, your love, your winning at life. I do not yet have a pithy name for this series, but I'm going to come up with one. And as soon as I do, it'll be on the Fitness Protection LLC um, Instagram account. I'm going to send it to the text thread. But please, final note, for the love of God, as you do this, please take a minute to video yourself executing and put that video in the Coached in Love Strength Group, then tag me in it so I don't miss it. If you have not gotten feedback from me on your video, go back in there and tag me again. It just means I missed the notification, okay? I have to see what you guys are doing. I don't sit here and do this because I think I'm pretty. I sit here and do this in spite of the fact that I'm 40 years old, in spite of the fact that my husband doesn't always love it, in spite of the fact that God knows who's watching me through either of these mediums and what they're thinking or how they're responding. I try really hard not to think about that. I do this because if I had my jacket on or I had a shirt on, you can't see these muscles in my side working. You can't see where what my, the small of my back is doing. I sit here and humble myself. After a year in bed where I'm not in the best shape of my life by any stretch of the imagination so that you understand exactly what you need to do, which muscles we're trying to get at, and what we're trying to accomplish. Please, please, please help me go that extra step. You have to upload those files. You have to upload those videos. I have to have at least one critical eye on what you've done at one point so we know what we need to do going forward. Okay? Please. Let me coach you, let me love you. I know this is humbling. You don't even have to do it as naked as I am, but you do need to do it. You do need to let me see it and get, get over any fear you have of critique. I have been critiqued over and over and over and over and over again. I have not stopped asking for critique, not abuse. I don't abuse anyone and I don't let anyone abuse me and you shouldn't either. There's a difference between, hey, try that again and go a little bit lower versus what the fuck is wrong with you? That's not what I showed you, go lower. And I will never opt towards the latter as long as you are doing the work, all right? I, even if you're not doing the work, I still won't go there because I think it's tacky and it's unnecessary and it's not coaching, it's abuse. It's not okay, all right? Yay, but knowing that I'm never, ever, 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 ever gonna go there, please, 
in that safe, private Facebook group, that, that closed space just for us to do exactly this. I'm doing this publicly so you won't have to. Go in that private room, show me what you're doing, let's talk through the moves and make sure you're doing them correctly because being coached is worthless if you won't let me love you too. Go in it Sunday.